This here is not a Fantex uh, computer case. It's the box from one, but it is not the actual item. The item inside is, in my opinion, way more valuable, at least to me. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see what's inside and go over it. And through the magic of editing, everything's out of the box for the most part. And as you can see, this is an NEC Ready 7610. It's an Intel Pentium based PC and looks like the expansion bay covers got pushed in maybe during shipping, I'm not sure. But the reason this is so special is this is my first PC, not this exact one. That was parted out years and years and years ago, but this is the exact same model. And from what I understand about the listing, it doesn't seem like anything was really changed. I, I think they put a new floppy drive in and the CD-ROM drive I don't think is original either because I believe it was an NEC branded one. But I could be mistaken. It's been a long, long, long time. But this, uh, this was our first family PC. And yeah, I, I've been trying to find one of these for a while now and I managed to find one. I probably paid a little too much for it, but at the same time, how often is this exact model going to become available? There were other variations that were uh, sold on eBay over the years, uh, slightly faster, slightly slower. Uh, I could find a few system boards for this line of computers, but I would never be able to put it all together in any you know, reasonable amount of time, if ever. So this came up, I had an alert set up on eBay, which by the way, if you're looking for something specific, set up an alert on eBay, it'll uh, email you, you can have it text you, it'll not notify you in the app. And so, yeah, so I've got one of these again, and uh, I'm really happy, I'm really excited. I wish I could find uh, my original monitor, I think that's going to be a little bit more difficult and probably even pricier just because CRTs seem to be going for a lot nowadays for some reason. Yeah, as far as I can tell, this was not really upgraded at all. Or if it was, it, everything was removed and put back stock. It came with a Pentium 120 megahertz processor, 1.2 gig hard drive, I believe 8 megabytes of RAM. It was a 4X CD-ROM drive, 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, onboard sound, onboard video, and a 28.8K... Uh, fax modem. It also had a remote control. I don't know if it came with this lot or not, but you can see the IR port right here. You can also see that it's severely yellowed, especially up against this floppy disk drive, which this is plastic. I'll probably have to retrobrite it to get it back to its uh, original color because I really don't like it looking this yellow, uh, especially since the rest of the case is, you know, your typical mid-90s beige. Um, I don't remember Let's look at the back here. I don't remember if these were the original thumb screws for it though or not. They are definitely unique. I'll have to, I'll have to look up some photos and see. Uh, standard ports though, PS2, keyboard, mouse, two serial ports, parallel port, audio in and out, as well as microphone. So your uh, VGA out, there's a modem, and a game port, as well as a standard power supply. And I believe the whole, if I remember correctly, the whole thing has to come off in order to access the internals. There's a little bit of rust down here. I'm not sure if that's a good sign or a bad sign. Seller said it worked, so I have to hope that that is accurate. The original expansion slot covers appear to be here. They could be different. Again, I don't remember when we got it. I think we got it in either, I think it was the summer of 1996. So it would have been around that time that this would have come out. So it's been a long time and I don't know I don't remember much about it, unfortunately, uh, as far as its physical capabilities, so or what it physically came with. So uh, let's open it up and take a look inside. Actually, you know, even before we do that, let's look at what else it came with here, because it came with quite a bit of stuff. And uh, I'm really actually surprised that it came with some of this stuff, because finding a computer like this is rare enough, but being able to, for it to come effectively complete is even rarer in my opinion. So there's this box here. Oh, this is where the mouse is. So let me open that up. That it is the original one, late branded NEC. Now this is just a Logitech mouse, a standard one. Logitech made mice for a lot of different computer manufacturers and you can probably even still buy these. I want to see, I think they even have a version of this mouse with an optical sensor on the bottom. So I may want to look for that one. Here is the keyboard packaged in this nice little bubble envelope and it is also the original keyboard NEC I believe again it's also Logitech 
I don't remember for sure, but I think it is. Also, we'll need some cleaning and retro brighting because it is yellowed. Although it's yellowed more in the bottom half than the top half. I don't know if it's coming through on camera. Probably not. Because I don't have a nice fancy camera. I do things high tech around here. And then there's quick start guide. Basically just a poster. Your typical 90s set out up your computer poster. Teaches you how to plug everything in. I'll see if I can find a PDF version of this and then I can display it. Uh, it did not come with the microphone, which is... Probably fine, it wasn't a great microphone to begin with. It wasn't really, and it didn't come with the speakers either. Unfortunately, that would have been really neat because uh, they had these speakers that pretty much matched the aesthetics of the computer itself. And that monitor that's in there, it's, um, can't tell if that's the 15 or the 17 inch model. We had the 15 inch model, I believe. I'd like to find a 17, but even if I only find the 15. Uh, also here shows you the new start menu in Windows 95 as well as some of the applications it comes with. So yeah, I'll try to find a PDF version of this. Maybe archive.org's got it somewhere. And then there's this box labeled extras. Um, what's in here? Man, everything was packaged. Oh, okay. It did come with the remote. It's a generic remote, multimedia PC capabilities, faxing from here apparently, dialing as well as the original, I'm guessing, recovery CD, which is just a standard generic recovery CD that they you know, manufacturers would have for several different models uh, on it. Let me see if I can get it without any reflections or anything. There's the list of software that came with it. I think these recovery CDs are available on archive.org as well. I'll see if I can find a link to it and possibly even a uh, image so you can get a better read of what's on there. And it looks like it did come with the original manual as well, which is pretty cool too. And it's in pretty good shape. It's just basically just your standard getting started, what each light does, each button, connectors, how to use the software that it comes with, how to install expansion cards, things like that. I'll try to find a PDF of this as well and put that on there. I think that is all that this came with. Uh, I don't believe there was anything else, no. So now that we've unboxed everything, I'm going to go ahead and we'll open it up and take a look inside. All right, cleaned up a little bit, but I've got little pieces of foam everywhere. It's going to be a pain to clean up and I'll probably find them, you know, six months from now. But let's go ahead and Get the inside examined and make sure that hopefully nothing got damaged during shipping. There we go. So there are all of the components. We've got the full length ISA uh, modem. There are also a couple of PCI slots and two, three additional ISA slots. There's one behind the modem. And we'll get that out of the way so we can see the rest of the board. Power supply, AT style uh, power connector, even though it's got PS2 ports. ATX, I think, was coming out around this time. I don't remember. I was still new to the whole computer thing. And uh, cable went to the sound card so that you could do uh, voice calls through your computer, which was new and cool. And let's go ahead and get this uh, modem out of here. Also get a little closer. It's definitely dusty in here and it is going to need some cleaning for sure. As you can see, attached to this screw here. And that should give you a much better look at the motherboard itself. The 15-pin uh, game port right there. It's got an Opti sound chip. It is the A2C930A. Got the Alliance uh, ProMotion video right there, as well as I believe you can upgrade it. I think it comes with one meg. You can upgrade to two, or maybe it was 512 upgrade to one, but I believe that I was able to get up to two out of it. So. Got a feature port here. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, 
wave uh, table synthesis connector. You can add wavetable synthesis to it. It was starting to come out at this time, although this just does FM synth. And Intel chipset, it's a socket five, I believe, with the, with the Pentium. So I don't believe that this will support any of the MMX CPUs or like a K62 or anything like that. So uh, I think the highest I can go with this is 160 standard Pentium, which, you know, is good enough. I believe this is the cash card. I don't think I had one either. Um, I'm going to see if I can try to find one of those. I don't know if it's specific to this computer or if you could find, you know, a universal one, a generic one. And hard to see behind here, but you've got, looks like all four RAM slots are occupied. I don't think I ever upgraded the memory in this one. I don't recall. Onboard IDE, floppy connectors, and that's that basic. Oh, and of course, your... PC speaker right here so so that's the inside I'll try to you know take some pictures of uh, the board up close I'll uh, disassemble it further but I'll do that off camera because I don't want this video to be three hours long or anything like that plus it'll give me an opportunity to give it a good cleaning and I'll take a look at the CD-ROM drive itself to see if it is the original one or not but again I'm thinking it's not just because of the fact that oh no this says manufactured September 1995 so this could be original. I could have sworn though that the original one actually said NEC on the cover. The floppy drive is almost definitely not original. It's way too brightly colored. So we'll have to take a look at that and see. Maybe I'll be surprised as well. Now there are jumpers here to set uh, and clear the BIOS password, which should be cleared. The other thing that it's not visible now because of the fact that I think it's down here somewhere, and that's the RTC clock and battery. Fortunately, this does not use any type of battery that'll explode and damage traces or anything, but it's a Dallas-based uh, RTC. And I'll try to superimpose an image now. It's basically a self-contained RTC clock and battery. Uh, sometimes they're socketed, sometimes they're not. And what happens is the battery inside dies, and so it stops working. Some computers don't care. They'll just give you an error. This one won't work without that working. In fact, I believe the seller said they put some kind of mod in there to get it working. But even then, you still have to hit F1 every time this computer boots up. Good news is you can still buy new ones. I don't know if they're new old stock or if they still make them. And I'm hoping that it's socketed, so it'll just be an easy replacement. But if not, then I'll have to whip out the desoldering station and put a new one in there. But for now, I'll just leave it as is. Like I said, I'll try to get some better photos of that. And well, that's going to be it for part one. Uh, this video was actually uh, over 25 minutes long that I cut down to make it... Uh, about 13, 14 minutes. So I want to go ahead and split it up into a part two, just so that it's not long and drawn out. Part two will be me cleaning it, possibly retro brighting it, I'm not sure. It'll definitely have a power on self test just to make sure it does in fact work. And we'll also do some traditional refurbishing, cleaning, etc., and maybe even replace the hard drive with a CF to IDE adapter. But for this video, that's it, it's over. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe, but as usual, it's never an obligation, although I do appreciate it. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down, but please leave a comment below as to why, so I can try to use that to help things going forward. Thanks all, and I'll catch you later.